Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Tris, it's really good to see you. It's been a week. <laughs> I always enjoy putting the next video up. You do the filming, you do the editing, and then you upload it, put the information in, and you get to Sunday and you put the video on. And I get nervous, I will say, I get nervous. And I do the live chat as part of the premiere, and it's really good fun. And I see the usual people that come in, as well as some new people. And I've had so much fun reading the comments and just learning who you all are. And I think once we get to go to model railway shows, I'll get to meet some of you and uh, you'll get to meet me, maybe, if you uh, if you fancy bumping in and saying hi and uh, going from there. That's if you recognise me, I might have all my beard and hair by then and you'll be looking for some bald guy. So anyway, uh, I hope you've all been good this week and taking care of yourselves and uh, playing with your railways. Uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, confidence on the model railways. It's it's a tricky subject because a lot of people struggle with the idea of just having a go at doing it. What if I ruin it? Um, some people don't like painting. That's uh, one thing that I found um, is that I enjoy and I do put it off sometimes thinking oh I haven't got the right colour or it doesn't matter. You can always paint over it again, it won't be as nice, but just have a go. Uh, ballasting, people are scared of that. You can always just start on a straight bit of track, have a go. If it's terrible, then fine, you can pick it all off. It doesn't matter. You can always salvage it one way or another. So I don't know if that's something that stops people with the hobby. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to just have a go at doing it. Uh, the, the other bit, um, I was watching... Um, I, I don't know what I like to watch, uh, Dragon Junction, I think it is. Um, and he can has all sorts of things in his layout and it's brilliant. Um, and whereas I watch some other people and they have a specific type of thing and everyone's got their thing. And um, you should just go for it, enjoy it, it'd be good. Um, anyway, what are we talking about today? I have made a turntable, which you would have seen in the description, um, for the 009 bits. It's not perfect, there's no electronics that go underneath it, it's just a mock-up prototype. But we'll talk about that more probably in a minute. More probably? That's not good English, is it? We'll just talk about that more <laughs> in a minute. Um, and I've just kind of filmed what I've been up to doing. It's just to do a little prototype to get it in there, get the rest of the track on there, which means I can get some greenery, some shrubbery in there and work out some bits and make it look good. And then I'll put some more time into this. Um, what I will be doing is I've ordered a stepper motor for it and then we'll be able to have it so it's positional. So it picks up the points, not the points, but the tracks. Um, so it knows what to do. And my good friend Ian uh, is going to help me work all that out because I don't know how to do it. He's going to do all the, the hard work for me. So I need to do that as well as put the electronics onto the track um, and have it pickups coming out underneath so then it crosses um, swaps the polarities for once it flips around the other way so that would be really really good for me um, once it's done but that's a later project down the road but I thought why not let's paint it up and uh, get it onto the layout and it's just a fun 3d printed piece um, the hardest bit was actually hacking the hole out the board <laughs> I made a lot of dust um, and not a lot of impact straight away and uh, made the worst hole I've ever made in my life um, I think, not that I've made, made many holes, I don't use drills, it's easy. Anyway, I'm waffling. I've been asked a lot about how big is the loft layout um, and various bits about the layout, and I haven't for a while just talked about the whole lot. So we're going to go up into the loft and we're going to have a little look at its current status as well as some of the things that I want to do with it. So let's go up there now and uh, I'll see you there in a second. We're up here in the loft. And I've been asked so many questions over time in the comments that you leave politely in the video box underneath. It's a strange way of calling it, isn't it? Um, I just want to give you some information about it. So this is a loft of a semi-detached house. Um, I've got the beams which cause trouble for some people. But all I've done is I've slotted the layout in the gap either side and I've gone to the maximum width because I have joists that come down like this and some that come down underneath it um, as well as the ones that come down. So I've got a certain area which is my maximum size. If things were different, I could have it lower like at Everett Junction's layout, 
but he has it much lower to the ground and he can use that bigger area but I don't have that because I have the joists coming across um, I believe they're called joists um, bits of wood we could also call them anyway so I've been asked how big is the layout so I used boards from B&Q MDF boards that is if I did it again yes I would use ply but I'd already bought the boards years ago moved to this property and I've put them up and gone with that sometimes we don't have disposable cash just to go and spend a good hundred quid on a ply board or more I think it would cost actually so I started out with the standard size strip width um, which is the I think it's the 600 wide that they give it a bit like a kitchen worktop kind of size area um, and then a full length board that goes down which I think is a 1 meter 20 so in total it's 2 meters 40 um, the total length of the layout I believe I'm right in saying that yeah so we've got um, a 6 foot length yeah and then a 6 foot length again so 12 foot um, of that and then at the end um, I've got a slimmer section here I'll just bring you forward just so we can actually talk about it a bit more personally so I'm not so far away I have what is the lift out section so I'll just bring this down here a little bit and I'm not going to lift it out for you but you'll be able to check out some of my previous episodes I'll probably put comments on the screen which ones to look for um, it's not lift out because I haven't done all the wiring underneath I've got some connectors from my father um, and that will allow me to um, do all the lifting out but I thought I'll get to the point that I've done all the tracks you'll see my copper clad sleepers that I put in on the previous episodes um, I will say I'll just zoom in on here uh, I've sold a lot of these, which was, I was a little bit surprised at how many I sold. And um, I keep getting um, orders trickling through from time to time. Um, but these basically allow me to screw down um, the copper clad bits, which match the um, Code 100 track. And what some people do is just cut out a piece of copper, which works perfectly well. Um, they break the connection between the left and right, and they screw it down. Um, but Dad gave me the idea because he'd been gluing strips together and did a really nice job. But I thought I'd CNC machine out these and it's been really, really good. And I've got them on both sides. So I've got an engine in the way there. Oh, sorry, knocking you around. We'll just move him out of the way. It's my uh, small prairie. Let's come around there. Okay, so that's that on the lift out section. So you can see the other ones. So this part of the layouts being that it is smaller um, is only I think it's like 55 wide so it's half a meter and a bit um, and what I did that you'll then see is I matched it all the way around so we'll just bring it around here so I've got my station at the moment in here um, we'll just zoom in a bit more on that so that's the, the beautiful station which I've got a good set of train just sitting in there at the moment so that's great again that's the same width as the other side so you're getting the picture now aren't you I think you are getting the picture so I've got some focus issues going on here and then on the end you'll see that um, we have the main support for the 009 layout so I'm gonna zoom you back out here I'm gonna come back more to here so yeah this is the 009 support kind of little structure um, and that allows us to put the board on it lines up with this little line here um, I've got copper clad sleepers again on the end um, of here as well as on the board that you've seen many many times and we'll be talking about during this episode um, and from that we have underneath it the track that runs underneath so I'll just take you off the camera stand And it's a bit messy at the moment, nothing's bolted down. I've got a bit of cork under here because I'd started running it round from under here. Um, you can see down there and I've got my various bits of the mountain there. So yeah, that's that's under there. I'm going to have three lines and I've got ideas to have like a tunnel entrance here. But then I could have a night scene here. Maybe put some houses, I don't know, built in here. Some dim lights and from this view it might look quite cool but... That's something for another day. There's so many ideas that we can apply to the, the layouts. Um, yeah, so from here, um, so it comes around from the station and that comes around under here. 
If you're wondering what I'm doing development wise on the layout, what I want to do is put the station on the curve um, and then we can make more use of the layout. So I want to have the station starting from the tunnel entrance coming around here and then down here we'll have, I really want to have an engine shed. Um, I've got one and I need to put it up at some point um, but I want to have it down the far end, an engine shed I want to have a little goods area down here. I like the idea of that and I don't mind that there's going to be track everywhere. Some people get upset about it but for me I like having lots of track and lots of engines running around really. Um, yeah so that's that. Um, then you have the 009 layout that we've just talked about. That goes on our mountain top pass working our way down here. It works its way down as we come through here. And that works its way down, all the way down to there. And as you can see, um, it finishes about here. And what I want to do is have a little line that goes off down there along the side. Um, and I've got a couple of ideas. I've been given some ideas by people of what we could do with it, but we can have some fun and uh, go from there, really. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically the layout. Um, the one bit that I then added on to the layout is these pieces of wood that my friend David made for me and then I also added some wood behind you can see the join just back here and that runs all the way behind there and that actually makes us go from 600 um, which is this central piece um, we've got 200 there and another 200 here so we've got quite a wide layout which is really cool for me it just means I need to be able to reach into the corners but at the moment these move out of the way and once I've done everything at the back which is actually going to have a hillside um, I've kind of mocked up some bits of corrugated cardboard um, whacked a load of trees on there had some fun with it um, but that's something that I'm going to do for when I've got the uh, time and energy to do it my work's been quite busy lately so I just do small little projects in the evening and that easy enough to do um, yeah so that's very extended and then we've got our separate line that will go underneath the hill disappear out and I want to have like a portal here so then you'll see the engine pass through from time to time and I also have some cool video ideas that I'm looking forward to applying to all of it but you can see the mountain pass of the 009 layouts and yeah so I just thought this I guess this is like a layout update for some of you that are catching up and haven't watched it for a while um, for like I said for this section this will be good shed I'll have the engine shed down there this is all going to come up I'll have a new platform I'll do something with this um, I don't know yet. I'll just keep it in a box, I guess, and keep it nice. Um, if you wonder what my layout's called, it's called Elsewhere, which again is on one of my videos. I made the sign on the 3D printer and uh, painted it up, and I don't know, it's pretty good. I was thinking about calling the 009 layout at Nowhere, so, um, or we could call it No Good. So then you got the mountain, um, and you got to No Good, and I can have a little sign here that says up to no good so hey that'd be funny right anyway so I think I've waffled on enough about this um, yes I will do some more updates on this at some point but I just need to dedicate some time um, so at the moment I'm doing smaller fun projects it's been hot weather so the 009 layout is downstairs and it means that I'll be able to do work on that on hot sunny days and then when we get to the winter I can or the cooler days I can really cram in some time up here but anyway, so let's go back downstairs. I hope you're happy with what you've seen up here. Anyway, if you've got any questions, just fire them over. Leave them in the comments, and I'll try and address them. Um, but I hope I've covered all the questions that have been asked about the layouts. And um, yeah, so see you downstairs in a second. Hopefully that's given you a good idea on what I'm up to in there. What I really want to do is what I've talked about is have the station on a curve from the bottom corner. I've seen quite a few people do that. On the Hornby magazine layout they have the station on the corner which means on the straight sections for me I can have the engine shed and a goods yard and whatever I'm gonna fill the place with track it's good fun uh, I know some people don't like having lots of track in the layouts but I do I kind of like the sound of lots of engines going around and having lots of things in goods yards and sidings full of wagons but that's me anyway so we're going to go back to this uh, wonderful little uh, turntable for the 009. Um, it's going to be better um, <laughs> once I've finished it, but you need to start with something to work out how you need to improve it. don't have time to work out all the details. As you notice with my buildings, I had a comment from one YouTuber 
um, whenever they're a YouTuber or just a, uh, a user to watch uh, YouTube. Uh, but they talked about oh, my buildings didn't have gutters and vents and stuff. And yeah, they don't. And maybe I'll add them later on. I don't think I'll be adding gutters unless I have the time. Um, but I definitely want to add some vents for when they're steaming to get that out. So um, I appreciate the, uh, the comments and uh, I will be improving bits where I can. I just only have so much time to work out certain details. So that's that. So we're going to go and have some fun um, putting it together, uh, printing it out. And yeah, we can talk about it more now. Maybe. Hello. Fill the water, so that's there's an oil that's the oil mm. that gets mixed up with the um, water, and then you can drain it afterwards. I there. see. Um, I think you drain the. Yeah, I think that, that's all. You, just adjust the gas with that. That and all. Just wait for the gauge to come up. Mm. So as you're used to seeing now, this is my end of three, well not mine, it's my borrowed one. I will have a, a version two coming hopefully next week, as I've already said. But it was a nice simple thing to print out, very round in shape, and uh, worked out quite nice. I had to design it for a bearing fit for them going in uh, to the main part, but on the turntable part of the turntable, I needed to make uh, the, the what would be the 10mm OD. Um, slightly smaller, I went for like 9.8 because um, it's always slightly different. Getting it off this bed's quite nice, but as you can see, there's like marks left over, so sometimes it's quite tricky. It doesn't come out as uh, well as you think sometimes, it gets really stuck on there if it's been squished down too much. So you have to be really careful when you level the bed, that's one thing that I found a pain with it, but I'd like to get some of the uh, fancier printers at some stage, but this is it. You can see there's like an infill on the large piece. The little piece didn't have it, and the really tiny piece has got nothing. That's just to support it whilst it's doing, but all we do is we get it out. Um, I pick it out until the whole lot pops out, as you can see there. And then sometimes a small bit of cleanup is needed. But giving it a little check, it's alright. There's a couple of bits that need trimming and, and working on. But ultimately it's alright. But we can check the bearing fit, see how it goes. Um, I'll see how many I can stack on here. It should only be two, but I just gonna a little play. I realise there's not almost room for three, but you know, it's good to see how things fit anyway. So we just drop them inside. They kind of go in really nicely actually. I was really happy with the fit and I keep it like that because this is just my prototype version just to get an idea uh, onto how it will look and then I can add things to it later on. When I say add, it will just be print another one with the features on. But popping in the, uh, the screws, just gonna hold some bits together and gives it something to pivot on. So yeah, screw it in and go from there. Just some little M3 screws here. And they go on nicely. So just give it a little primer. I had some white left. I haven't been to Halfords for a long time, so I just found something that I had kicking around. And once that's done, I give it a dusting of black, really. Um, I just thought if I go with black, then I don't have to fill in all the details and everything. So it's just matte black, some Halfords matte black, nothing special. Um, again, this is just mocking up, so 
I might end up making it look half decent, but it's not going to be staying that way. It's going to be a, a new piece of gear once I've finally finished it. This is the jig I made. So I just thought if I draw the hole first, I can mark a circle around it afterwards. So a six mil hole, just pop that through. And then we just slide it in. We just squeeze it in. And that pops in. And then get the pen out and we're just gonna draw around it. And then I'm gonna do a very useless job of trying to cut it out with the uh, coping saw. Um, a lot of faffing around, a bit of dust. Um, did it indoors, which is always fun. Um, and just take out pieces until I'm happy. Um, and just trim, 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 till it's round and it drops in nicely. I know I could have used a hole saw, maybe. My friend Ian suggested that, but I'd have to be buying a hole saw just to do that one job. I might never end up using it again, so I was happy with the holes. Um, no, I was on the coping saw. But let's get painting. I just got used to my greys and stuff like that that I have um, from Hobbycraft. Uh, mix it with a little bit of the um, kind of the, I'm not sure what colours they are, but it's like more of a creamy colour. And I want to kind of have all the different paving slabs, a slightly different colour, so I'm not being too strong on the individual colour. But all we do is we just start colouring them in. Um, I can imagine you'll be doing the same. At the moment you can't see the separate tiles, but from my view I can. And I just work my way around really, as you can see. And I'll just add a bit more of the uh, the more stony yellowy colour compared to the stony grey colour. And just play around with them. And once it's done I'll have a little play of uh, weathering it in a bit more. But as you can see, it's pretty simple. Any of you that are scared of painting... Um, don't be, just have a go. There's nothing wrong with uh, just getting some paint on things, even if it looks terrible after you've done it. At least you had a go. That's the main thing. So once I've done this, I just want to do something that represents the depth of the paving slab. So I'm just going to do a little bit of an inside edge here and work my way around there just to give it a kind of a nice look. Whilst it's on the layout, even if it's not fully operational or... <laughs> partially operational um, at least it will kind of have a half decent look there's a bit of a rib left from where it put the bottom layer on the print I wasn't quite happy with it but to be honest once I put a load of this on it it was fine and I'm going to get the sponge out and actually spot it and just give it a bit of a, a blended in look um, with little speckles all over the place so it gives it a name more of a realistic look I always hate to say something looks realistic because in reality what I've done probably looks nowhere near how anything would have looked in real life. But from me looking down at my layout, yeah, it looks all right. So now the next step is to do this little piece. Um, this is where the track will get stuck on. So I thought what I'll do is I'll paint it brown first, um, get that sorted out, and then I'm planning to we'll get some of the lighter colours and we'll just blend things around until it starts having a nice look. So this will look like I've gone a bit too light there which I have but the dark brown hasn't dried yet and all I'm going to do is keep going till we start kind of giving it like it's got real dirty wood it's been there for a fair few years it's got grimy it's all become kind of one solid looking colour over time and I um, can't really see any sleepers but yeah I'm kind of happy with how this turned out because once I've got the track on there you won't see it so much and we go from there. And when I do my proper version, I've had a had a go at painting it anyway, knowing what I want to do. So we drop that in there. We we'll see how it looks. I'm happy. It's got a kind of let's say a unique look. It doesn't just have a single brown colour. And I line up my 009 uh, track, and we'll just kind of work out what to snip. And I'm a bit out of focus here, but I only did it once, and you get many views on that. But we'll just cut it to length, give it a file. It's always good to give the ends a file, make sure they're nice and square and just looking nice, really. And then I get some copy decks, give it kind of 10 minutes to go tacky. I spread it around first, it kind of went everywhere. I kind of got this trick off uh, Charlie off Chadwick. So I thought, oh, I'll try this copy deck stuff out. When I was at Hobbycraft, I picked myself up a little bottle. So we just smear that around, give it 10 minutes, and then I stick it down and it stays there. You can rip it off. Not easily, let's say, but you know, it's not going to fall off. So it means that I don't have to put any nails through it or anything like that. And I might try and do that more um, for areas that don't require a lot of stress. But we'll just drop it in place, see how it looks. To be honest, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. But I'm going to put this down, I'll put some track in place, put the buildings there, and just 
get a good idea now of how it's coming together. But it means I can now put some ballast in these areas, paint the track, again, do that before the ballasting, um, and just work out where I'm going with it really. And I'd really like to start adding some grass to this and some other little buildings. I've got some ideas of what I want to do with the layout, but for me, that looks pretty nice. I don't know what you think, but I'm happy and it's only going to get better. You can see where I've got to with that. It's It was simple enough putting it together. I need to tweak the design, move things around. And, and on the base side of it, I will be adding more plastic bits so I can screw parts on and, and just work things out. Um, but that's all part of the fun. I'll start with the stepper motor, get the drive to it, get the power to the track. And then we can look at the positional parts of it afterwards. So that's great. One thing I want to talk about is the next thing I want to make for the 009 layout is this is a old, I don't know if it's something that dad made out of lots of different parts. Uh, I'd have to find out. But basically where you have the coal. And I want to have that on the 009 bit just to complete the uh, engine shed area off a bit more. As well as make my water tower. So I might mock up some quick ideas and put something together. I just can sketch up something to find out if I like it and if I want to change it. And with the 3D printing it just makes light work of everything. Um, yeah, I guess you can see that whilst I'm doing it. It might seem that I've spent a lot of money getting a machine to get me to do these things. I'm borrowing this current machine, um, but I've also bought myself an Ender 3 V2, which should be hopefully coming maybe next week. I don't know. Um, but once I've got that, that'd be really good to see. And I can tell you a bit more about that. Um, I want to do the platform area as well. And once I've done them, I can also do the um, cave entrance and that's something I really want to do get the plaster cloth on there and have some fun with that and we'll get that to a certain point that it looks kind of nice I'll get it up into the loft once it cools down and um, it will be part of the layout which would be good so I want to continue the mountain going down get the ballast on the track paint the sleepers so we do that before we ballast um, and go from there and that would be really really nice and kind of finish that off and then after that, what I really want to do on the layout, which will probably be episode 50 by the time I get there, is do the hill backside as I've talked about when we did my little tour up in the loft. So that's me. That's everything from me. I haven't done much more than that, but I feel that's that's enough. <laughs> and, and, you know, when you have to spend the time doing these bits, it takes quite a bit of time just to model these things up, print them off, paint them. Um, I really appreciate the comments. It drives me forward to do the next thing. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, you've all been brilliant. I love the comments. Keep them coming. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you want to know about the layout tools that I use or anything that you're interested in. If you're nervous about asking the questions, don't be. Just ask them away. If not, find me on Facebook or Instagram. Um, leave me some messages through there. I'm Double O'Neill on Facebook, Instagram, again, Double O'Neill, check it out. Um, just leave me a direct message or a messenger message through Facebook um, and just um, yeah, just ask me whatever you need to, to know. Um, I'm not an expert. I will never say I'm an expert. I don't know everything, um, but I know little bits and bobs. And if I don't know it, I'll start learning about it. So also thank you to my subscribers. I'm getting closer and closer to the 3000 subscribers. It's absolutely fantastic. And I'm chuffed to bits with it. It's brilliant. Um, and my Patreons, thank you for supporting me. Um, I, uh, I, I appreciate the support from everyone that I have. Um, my dad's probably one of my biggest fans. So he's always talked to me about my episodes. Um, so thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you on the next episode. Take care, look after yourselves, and I will see you all soon. Bye.